Salut, Pascal Moscato here. Welcome back in another video tutorial for Motion Builder. Uh, in today's video, I want to give you a quick introduction to constraint in Motion Builders. Um, I want to show you parent-child constraint, position, rotation, scale constraint. It's also a good opportunity to see how to reference constraint properties uh, on your constrained object to edit it faster and easier. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. So the parent-child constraint, uh, to start this, I'm gonna start by putting the parent-child constraint into the scene. And I'm gonna click on the sphere right here, press Alt and drop the object in the constrained object slot right here. And the source or the parent, press Alt, drag and drop in the source parent uh, slot right here. If I activate this uh, constraint, the sphere will go snap right to the um, to the cube's position and if i move the cube it moves it move also the um, the sphere if i rotate the same thing happen but if i scale the sphere stay the same so to fix that i want to select the constraint itself go in properties and under the constraint axis tab I'm gonna click on affix scaling and now if I use scale on the cube it will also affect the scale on the sphere now I would like to add another object into uh, the constraint you can add multiple sources so in this case, I'm going to add this cube right here. Press Alt, drag and drop here. So you can see it's right in the middle of the two cubes. And it's going to be the same with the scaling and rotating. Now let's add an offset into this story. To do that, simply click on the sphere and move it around. If the lock checkbox right here is not checked, you can move it. If it's checked, it's going to be stuck like this. The way offset works uh, has nothing to do with the sphere itself. It's all related to the cubes and the, the constraint. So I'll show you what I mean. If you select the constraint and go down in the properties, you can notice that there is a offset for each source with translation, rotation and scale. And those are the values that define the offset. So you might feel like um, if you're using this and animating this, you might think you're animating the offset, but you're not, you're animating the object. Uh, so if I remove the constraint, yes, the object is moving. So what if I want to animate the offset? Well, the answer is right here. It's this. You have to animate those values. And uh, simply put keyframe on it like this an easier way would be to um, put those value as references on the sphere and use other key so I'll show you that select the sphere select the constraint in the property window go on click on editor and property references then you have to find the parent child constraint and go down to find offset translation of the two let's go with offset translation rotation and scale i'm gonna click on the six properties and then click on the destination which is the parent child sphere this object right here and once everything is checked like this the, click on the double arrow and this will add those properties to this object as references. So now if I click on the sphere, go down the list, my uh, my properties are right there. Now, if I want to animate this, my recommendation is to turn on Otoki, click on this little drop box right here and click on selected properties. Then select all of the properties you want to uh, animate. Uh, in my case, I just want to animate translation, which are those two, I believe. Yes. Um, having those selected, I'm simply going to go here 
at frame 30 i'm gonna go there and go back so as you can see now i have my keys on the timeline you can see where my keys are and the result look like this and obviously to exit that simply go in the f curve editor it's going to be the same uh, uh, as any other object all right if you have put any offset and you don't want them anymore the easiest way is uh, to click on zero that will remove all of the offset the offset as you can see now they are unavailable and it will lock the object so now you can no longer um, move it what you have left is the weight the um, for every source you can change the weight and that is um, a very simple way to make a switch as you can see as I'm putting the weight down it's moving towards the other object and here's the opposite so this is still available so maybe I want to use an 80 20 thing so it's closer to the other object So now regarding the um, position, rotation, and scale constraint, it's exactly the same thing, except uh, it's very specific to uh, each uh, track. And because they exist, I would recommend you use those instead of using a parent-child constraint and removing, for example, rotation and scaling like this. Um, I don't recommend doing that, okay? If you want to, if you want the constraint translation only, use the position constraint here. Uh, why? Uh, it's simply because it's a lot easier to debug your amazing work uh, when you look at the constraint and you know it's a position constraint. You don't have to look inside the, the properties to find out. Oh yeah, somebody has changed um, the constraint axis, for example. Okay. The option for the position, rotation, and scale constraint are exactly the same as the parent-child constraint. And that's it for today's video. Uh, let me know if you have any question or comment. Uh, if you like this content, please leave a thumbs up or share with a friend or both. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. À la prochaine!